What's up YouTube? It's James coming back at you with another informative video. I hope you guys are doing well out there on this beautiful breezy Thursday. I'm doing really good myself. Well, 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 what do we have here? Criminals of the black robe. Former judges who sent kids to jail for kickbacks must pay more than $200 million. <laughs> These two criminals of the black robe right here who presided over juvenile you know, teenage boys sent children, these boys, uh, to these juvenile detention centers for minor infractions. Okay? Yeah. They got millions of dollars for doing that. How dirty is that shit right there? Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I won't be pronouncing these guys' names correctly because, hell, I just can't pronounce a damn name. Anyway, whatever, they don't deserve the respect anyway, right? Let's get into this article. It says here, two former Pennsylvanian judges who orchestrated a scheme to send children to for, well, two for-profit jails in exchange for kickbacks were ordered to pay more than $200 million to hundreds of people they victimized in one of the worst judicial scandals in U.S. history. U.S. District Judge Christopher Conner, uh, Conner that is, awarded $106 million in compensatory damages and $100 million in punitive damages to nearly 300 people in a long-running civil suit against the judges, writing the plaintiffs are the tragic human casualties of a scandal of epic proportions. And what came to be known as the Cash for... Well, Kids for Cash scandal, Mark Cervella and another judge, Michael Conahan, shut down a county-run juvenile detention center and accepted $2.8 million in illegal payments from the builder and co-owner of two for-profit lockups. Sierra Vela, who presided over juvenile court, pushed a zero-tolerance policy that guaranteed large numbers of kids would be sent to a PA child care and his sister facility, Western PA Child Care. Okay? Sierra Vela ordered children as young as eight to detention, eight years old. Many of them first-time offenders deemed delinquent for petty theft, jaywalking, truancy, smoking on school grounds, and other minor infractions. The judge often ordered youth he had found delinquent to be immediately shackled, handcuffed, and taken away without giving them a chance to put up a defense or even say goodbye to their families. Low life fucking crooks is what they are. And they were doing this to get money. That's what it all boiled down to. But look at the damage that they caused these children right here. Young as eight years old, right? Let's continue. Sarah Vela and Conahan abandoned their oath and breached the public trust. Connor wrote Tuesday in his explanation of the judgment. Their cruel and despicable actions victimized a vulnerable population of young people, many of whom were suffering from emotional issues and mental health concerns. The Pennsylvania Superior Court threw out some of 4,000 juvenile convictions involving more than 2,300 kids after the scheme was uncovered. It's unlikely the now adult victims would see even a fraction of the eye-popping damages award. But a lawyer for the plaintiffs said it's a recognition of the well, enormity of the disgraced judge's crimes. Okay? And I'm going to say this. Uh, catching these two love lights right here, they haven't even scratched the surface on how many other corrupt-ass judges in this country it's getting kickbacks for other things, you know, uh, such as this and other situations dealing with adults even, okay? That's just what it is. Let's continue. It's a huge victory. Marsha Levesque, co-founder and chief counsel of the Philadelphia-based Juvenile Law Center and a lawyer for the plaintiffs said Wednesday to have an order from a federal court that recognizes the gravity of what the judges did to these children in the midst of some of the most critical years 
of their childhood and development matters enormously. Rather or not, the money gets paid. Yeah, but see, that's another thing. Make sure the damn money gets paid. Make sure these people are awarded for the damages that was done to them by the hands of these two criminals of the black robe. All right. To continue here, another plaintiff attorney, Saul Weiss, said he would begin to probe, well, begin a probe of the judge's assets, well, assets, but did not think they had any money to pay a judgment. <laughs> here we go. Sarah Vela, 72, is serving a 20-year prison sentence in Kentucky. His projected release date is 2035. Conahan, 70, was sentenced to more than 17 years in prison, but was released to home confinement in 2020. Punk ass motherfucker. Now, with six years left on his sentence because of the coronavirus pandemic. Wow. No, no, no. Put his ass in jail. He didn't have no, you know, uh, mercy for those children that he ruined their lives and shit. He didn't, you know, so put his ass up. Let him sit down for a while. To continue, Connor ruled after hearing often emotional testimony last year from 282 people who appeared in Luzerne County Juvenile Court between 2003 and 2008. 79 of whom were under 13 when Cerevela sent them to juvenile detention and 32 parents. They recounted his harsh and arbitrary nature. His disdain for due process, his extraordinary abruptness, and his cavalier and boorish behavior in the courtroom, Connor wrote. One unnamed child victim testified that Sierra Vela had ruined my life and just didn't let me get to my future according to Connor's ruling said another plaintiff I feel I was just sold out for no reason like everybody just stood in well stood in line to be sold okay another victim described how he shook uncontrollably during a routine traffic stop a consequence of the traumatizing impact of his childhood detention and had to show his mental health records in court to explain why my behavior was so erratic. Several of the childhood victims who were part of the lawsuit when it began in 2009 had since died from overdose or suicide, Connor said. Listen at this right here. Now, these are some serious damages, okay? These are these 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 two criminals of the black robe should get life in prison for what they did to these people. Okay. To continue here in conclusion, it says to calculate compensatory damages. The judge decide each plaintiff was entitled to a base rate of a thousand for each day of wrongful detention and adjusted that amount based on the circumstances of each case. Substantial punitive damages were warranted because the disgraced judges inflicted unspeakable physical and emotional trauma on children and adolescents, Connor wrote. The damages awarded only covers, excuse me, the damages award only covers plaintiffs who uh, chose to participate in process. Other major figures in the case settled years ago, including the builder and the owner of the private lockups and their companies and payouts totaling about $25 million. Okay, that is a lot of money. You see, so there's no wonder why they're building so many, you know, private prisons, simply because you got criminals of the black robe waiting to cash in. And a lot of them figure they're going to be dead before they get caught any damn way, you know. But at least they got these two low lives right here, all right. I want you guys to tell me what you think about this particular story right here. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts, views, and opinions on it. 
like, comment, share, and subscribe. And people, please remember to live your life as though we're being watched simply because we are. This is James, and I'm out. Peace.